Hi everyone, welcome to VLSA Academy. We have covered floor planning and placement related concepts already. And now we have already covered some few, few basic concepts of CTS also. And in this series, let us get started about learning of clock tree synthesis related concepts further. In previous CTS related videos, we have seen the goals of CTS that why CTS is built. And we also discussed that we will cover each of these topics in detail. We visited this example too to understand about HBase related concept. We understood from this example that tool always try to balance the latencies and in order to do that it will try to create almost similar path from clock source to all clock endpoints. After that we took one more example wherein we understood that tool will divide all clock endpoints into set of different loads and cluster it so that load on the clock gets symmetrically distributed and when we draw the clock tree in form of H bridge the skew is in the acceptable limits in general. We had asked one question also that why the initial trunk of this clock tree it is more thick compared to the rest of the clock tree downstream to it and why is that? So answer to that is that thick metal will have a lower impedance or resistance and hence the clock latency will also be lesser because of that. One common question that is asked in the interview is what happens if the skew is not within the limits or your clock skew is not balanced. So let us understand that now with the help of waveform that will give us more clarity. So let us take the example here with this waveform where you can see that launch and clock capture waveforms are shown here. So these are the launch and capture waveforms and this represents the window for your capture edge and this represents the window for your launch side when, when it is launched in the capture side. And we know this already that your data should be stable before this edge occurs at the capture edge that is our setup check so this is our setup check and for for hold check this is our edge and this is your hold window you can say that hold check occurs at this edge and this is your hold window currently you can see that edges are aligned and there is no skew that means either latency is same and skew is almost ideal case when you do not have any any uh, skew but let us say that we have certain latency at the capture side and what is happening is your edge is occurring here now this is your capture edge you can see that there is a blue dotted line so if this is your capture waveform so capture edge will be coming later let us say that our clock period is one nanosecond so this edge is occurring at 1 nanosecond but let's say if your capture edge is delayed and let's say that it is occurring at 1100 picosecond or you can say that 1.1 nanosecond in this case what will happen is your skew will be 1.1 minus 1 and that will be 0 0.1 ns or you can say 100 ps so 100 ps is your positive skew because your capture clock is delayed and now effectively it is occurring at this edge blue dot edge, edge this waveform so this is your new after the skew is introduced this is your new edge and hence you can see that you have extra margin now because of this so your positive skew positive skew is actually good for setup and it actually helps for your setup because now you can see that it has some relaxed window now your window is pushed by some amount of 100 PS. So it is almost you can say that it is relaxed now and it is favoring the setup check. But if your skew is not within the limit, it might have favored your setup. But if it is not within the limit and let's say if your skew limit was 25 PS or maybe something around of that range, but you are getting 100 PS. So obviously it is favored setup. But if you see your hold check, it should have occurred in this window. You are expecting your edge to occur in this window but your window your edge is occurring at this th side and because of that you can see that it is violating the hold so your positive skew is good for setup but if your skew is not in the limit if your skew is not in the limit then it will violate for hold and positive skew is not good for hold positive skew is bad for hold in general this is a general uh, scenario it might vary based on case to case but in general this is considered that positive skew can be good for setup and it can be bad for hold 
similarly if you have negative skew which means your capture edge is pulled and it will be something like this you can see that dotted line is coming in earlier so when you have earlier then what will happen is you will have capture edge occurring earlier and your margin for setup will reduce and you will see that setup might violate in the negative skew case when you have capture edge pulled earlier so going by our previous example if we have clock period of 1 ns then this was your edge of 1000 ps or 1 ns this was the edge but now since we have pulled our capture edge by some amounts let's say by 50 ps so it will occur at 950 ps that means your skew will be 950 minus 1000 that is your your calculated skew will be negative that is minus 50 ps and in this negative skew you can see that it might occur before the edge of uh, uh, now your requirement for margin for uh, capture edge has uh, reduced so if it has reduced now by some amount let's say by 50 ps so your uh, your setup window has reduced because of that what will happen is skew uh, because of that setup uh, is not favoring it is not favoring the setup so you can say that negative skew is actually not good for setup or you can say bad for setup which is just opposite of positive skew and your negative skew is good for hold because now it might help in aligning the edge in a better manner so it can be good for hold let us revisit the example to understand latency and skew balancing further in reality you will not have uniform segregation of hierarchy in fact it will be something like this in which you will have one hierarchy having more cells compared to another you can see that in this hierarchy there are 10,000 cells here it is 11,000 cells but other hierarchy has 5,000 and one more hierarchy has just 2,000 cells hence the clock source will see non-uniform loading at the top level and the clock tree sometimes might not even look like a uniform edge but it will be having one arm longer than the other and sometimes more loaded than the other depending on the design this is just one example we took there can be thousands of other possibilities where tool will create clock tree structure which does not even look like an edge because the purpose of tool is not to build a perfect edge but its purpose is to meet the latency skew target along with that it has to meet fan out loading and transition targets as we can see in this example different hierarchies have different number of standard cells because of this latency will be different in all the clock branches that you can already observe but in order to balance that tool will try to buffer the clock tree which will look something like this also for bigger hierarchies and longer nets also it will give buffers to improve the transition also bigger hierarchies can be subclustered to divide the loads more uniformly such that latencies are balanced so in this case you can see that this 10,000 cell hierarchy has been split into two to five thousands and now it can be divided like this and sometimes even tool can create buffers here and here if you want to further balance the latencies and it is not meeting here also 11,000 cell hierarchies can be has been splitted up here in 5,500 and 5,500 and further sub branches can be buffered like this so depending on case to case tool can buffer the tree to balance the latencies and it will always try to meet the latency and skew targets that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and give your important feedback in the comment section thank you